Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Ronsalman of Scott Selections here for Tuesday, August 23rd. For again, today's play of the day, quick recap of what happened yesterday. We had a loss in baseball with the Braves team total over five runs at minus 102 on FanDuel. Really wasn't close. Atlanta was very good offensively entering the game. Then they no-showed the game. They only scored two runs. Contreras was awful in his two previous home starts, and he was randomly amazing yesterday. So not even close. Look for a bounce-back winner here on Tuesday. But we're going to pivot and talk about some WNBA action because there is one game three going on between the Sky and the Liberty taking place at around 9 p.m. Eastern time. And for this matchup, we're going to take the road team here. We're going to take the Sky minus six and a half at minus 110 on DraftKings. Time recording of 3 a.m. Eastern time. Cumberton's why I like the Sky in this spot. First reason shopping around, minus six and a half is actually a very good line. Fandle currently has the Sky favored by seven and a half. So you're saving a free point with no additional juice, which I'll gladly take advantage of every time. But the, so far, the series has been really a tale of two games. The Liberty, of course, ended up winning game one on the road, 98-91, to as they went on a massive run to end the game. I believe it was a 13-0 run in order to steal one on the road. Then game two came around, and Chicago absolutely destroyed them. Chicago won game two by a WNBA playoff record, 38 points. And the real story of game two was the Sky's defense, which only allowed 62 points. And I do think that's going to be the story in game three. Now to go through the actual defense for game two, the Sky allowed less than 19 points in each quarter. And the main reason why was the use of full court pressure and general on ball pressure. It seemed like in game one, the Sky let the Liberty get into their actions pretty quickly. And as a result, the Liberty scored 98 points. Game two came around, and Chicago blitzed absolutely everybody. They double-teamed UNESCO pretty much every time she had the ball, but they forced 19 turnovers, forcing the Liberty into a lot of really difficult spots with the full-court press. And even when the Liberty broke it, it took them so much time to actually beat the full-court press that they got into their actions very late, and as a result, had a lot of really bad uh, possessions throughout this game. But the main takeaway offensively for the Sky – uh, in the series, on the on the other hand, is the fact that the Liberty defense really has had no answers. Even with the Liberty winning a game, the Sky have scored at least 91 points in each of the first two games in the series. So the Liberty defense just doesn't really have the talent to stop the Chicago firepower, and I don't think they're going to stop Chicago in Game 3. Chicago might score 90 again, and I do think Chicago can get enough stops in order to open up a pretty decent lead throughout this game which will result eventually into a double-digit win. But to go through some actual uh, stats and efficiency numbers here, Chicago ranks third in offensive rating, while New York ranks in ninth, and Chicago ranks fourth in defensive rating, while New York ranks seventh. Chicago obviously has been the much better team all season long, and even though the Liberty did get a couple of key pieces back, the issue that was really put on notice or made clear in Game 2 the Liberty really don't have many good ball handlers. We know UNESQ is a solid ball handler, Besides that, they really don't have anybody else. Dangerfield can dribble somewhat, but she's extremely undersized, so the Liberty have not really been able to use her throughout the series. Laney's an okay dribbler, not great, and that's basically it, which is why the full-court press was so effective. And I really don't know what counters the Liberty are supposed to have besides putting another guard on the court, maybe letting Johannes play a bit more. But the point is, I do think there's a serious flaw with New York's actual offense, particularly the backcourt, and the Sky seem to have found the perfect defense for it. And as a result, I do question how the Liberty are supposed to solve this defense. But to go through some trends as well, the Sky have been very good when traveling to New York recently, as the Sky are 14-5-1 ATS in the last 20 meetings in New York. So you have the defending champions who seem to have completely solved the Liberty puzzle offensively they've been doing whatever they wanted all series long and the Liberty seem to have run into a defense that has really found the perfect antidote uh, to their offensive firepower and as a result I think the Sky win this game pretty handily now I do have a ticket on the Liberty to win the title and if that wins I make $21,000 so part of me kind of hopes I'm wrong but I really don't think I am I think the Sky win this game handily, and I think they definitely cover the six and a half. So play that once again here for Tuesday, August 23rd is going to be on the Sky minus six and a half and minus 110 on DraftKings. Bye, everyone.